Welcome to Learn from the Experts presented by the Women Business Owners Alliance. The WBOA is a group of women entrepreneurs made up of over 100 members. Today's show will have members of the WBOA here to present their expertise to you, our viewers. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm Kim Shagnon, and I'm the owner of Kim's Upholstery. I'm here with my co-host. I'm Susan Allen from Susan Allen Financial, and today we have two people with us. First, we have Carlene E. Fisher Hoffman from Hand to Paw Reiki, and also Dr. Tammy Nelson from Hamden County Chiropractic. And first of all, I'd like to start with you, Dr. Tammy. Can you tell us a little bit about chiropractic? Sure, I'd love to, yeah. Chiropractic is a healing profession. And it's such a unique healing profession because we use our hands and, and we're working on the body, but we're working on the nervous system, okay. which makes our, our profession very unique. The nervous system is comprised of the brain um, that's housed in um, the skull and the spinal cord goes down through the spine and the spinal nerves go to every single part of the body mm -hmm. so your body doesn't function unless the information comes from the brain through the spinal cord to the spinal nerves so when there's a problem and then there's an interference in there it can create problems pain numbness tingling to wherever mm -hmm. those nerves go so the importance of optimum health is when everything's functioning 100% in that okay. spine. The spine is composed of 24 movable bones, wow. and all those bones should be moving freely in order for the nerves to mm -hmm. be functioning 100%. Uh, so what we as chiropractors do is we find these areas that are functioning well, and we restore function in order to restore optimum health. And is there any age that you can start using from baby, 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 just born um, to, 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 to the very end. To okay. very end, yeah. And um, also, I wanted to know if what causes people really to think about starting to use chiropractic services you, or. You know, yeah, good question. There, there's many reasons why people come in. Uh, a lot of it's pain, mm -hmm. headaches, um, okay. uh, back pain, mid back pain, um, numbness. Tingling a lot of times, just not feeling right. So people are just, um, you know, sore, achy, or just not not feeling well at all, and they don't know why. Uh, that's a good reason to come in. But uh, a lot of people initially come in because of pain. But then once okay. we're bodies restored and functioning properly, then they understand when the body's not functioning well to come in prior to pain. Right, they, in is they really get the point. idea and they know, they kind of can predict or feel when Absolutely. it's they, they yeah. do need to be um, helped. Yeah. Also, now you were saying about headaches, a lot of people think it's just things with the back, but if oh. someone's experiencing headaches, right. that would be a good place for them absolutely. to start? Okay. Absolutely, many, many headaches are helped with, with chiropractic care, but not just headaches, you think of where the nerves are going to mm -hmm. and, and what's not functioning well. So chronic, chronic um, gastric problems and, okay. and uh, cramping, menstrual cramping, and any GI dysfunction and, and uh, bowel irritation, constipation, all these are all functions from the nerves not functioning well. So oftentimes by fixing the problem, it, it getting it to where the problem is, it. it will alleviate it quite oh, a bit. Wonderful. Yeah, uh, sinusitis and uh, TMJ problems, hmm. uh, earaches. That's very interesting. I didn't realize that myself. Yeah. So. It's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Someone with like chronic migraines is, Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, with chronic migraine. My, you know, and, and not to say we, uh, if the problem is from something not functioning well, by fixing it, yeah. it will occur. Migraines, there can be many causes. Right, so if right. it's due to uh, hormonal, uh, uh, you know, it, there may be something else underlying, but chiropractic can certainly help mm -hmm. with, again, function in order to restore Right. the nervous system yeah yeah and Carlene can you tell me a little bit about first of all what is Reiki so Reiki is like Dr. Tammy a, a healing modality where um, this universal energy forms and you combine this energy called Ray which is spirit and Ki which is energy and working together the two of them combined um, transfer through the hands of the practitioner into the human's body or mm -hmm. in, in my case it, it might be a, a canine because I work with dogs as well 
and this healing energy goes through the body and it goes to the areas that need healing. So what kind of ailments would be appropriate to call somebody who does Reiki for? So with a human, um, it's supposed to help with um, energy levels, um, feeling sluggish, um, being afraid or um, stressed out. If they have had a recent anxiety. surgery, that's the word I'm looking for. Yes, Thank anxiety. you. Anxiety. Okay. Anxiety. A little nervous, so I'm still trying to warm up. Um, the anxiety that's supposed to help, um, but it's also supposed to be a great complementary care to other things that you may. Um, be seeking professional help for. So if you're going in to see Dr. Tammy, let's say, a follow-up with Reiki after your chiropractic appointment would be absolutely beneficial to you. And where did this originate? Because we, you know, I'm hearing a little bit more about Reiki now, yeah, but I never it heard of more it in the yeah. past. So Reiki originated from this fellow, um, Dr. Mikeo Yusui, mm -hmm. and he was um, a guy that was really into healing modalities, and he was doing really well. This was back in the 1800s. He was doing really well for himself, but his business ended up coming, becoming stagnant, and he ended up going on a 21-day retreat to go um, pray, meditate, all that kind of thing, and it was there that this healing energy of Reiki came to him. And he came back and he um, taught the practice to a few people. And then it sort of became widespread. There are still only a few people that are able to teach Reiki and, mm -hmm. and give what we would call the proper attunements. So people are allowed to present Reiki and work on, work on people. What is the training involved? How does someone become... So for you get trained through a licensed Reiki master teacher, mm -hmm. and it's a, a several day course for each section. So there's different sections of Reiki. You can just learn it to do for yourself and your family, or maybe you want to get a little more knowledge in it, or maybe you want to actually practice Reiki and have it as part of your business, or you want to practice Reiki, have it part of your business, but you also want to be able to teach it to others. Mm -hmm. So there's various levels, and then there's various attunements that you get with each level. Okay. So I chose just to go to the um, second highest, which was the Reiki Master Practitioner. I really you know, enjoy working with people and with dogs, but I have no desire to teach other people Reiki, at least not at this point, maybe in the future. Okay. So how long of a process is it getting educated to be able to do this kind of a um, It's several hours for each section. So I would say probably um, maybe 20 hours. And then for me, I went and I got additional training to be able to work on dogs. Mm -hmm. So what would a dog owner call you? What kind of a specific problem would a dog owner call? So maybe for. for a dog, um, they have anxiety, they have trouble relaxing, they're afraid of thunderstorms, or maybe they had a recent injury. And while Reiki does not solve the problem, it helps speed the healing process. So mm -hmm. if you've had a dog that had um, back surgery, let's say, and you were to have it come for some Reiki, it would help speed the healing process of that back surgery. And Dr. Tammy, can you tell us a little bit about the training for chiropractors, some people that are not familiar with it, they're not really sure how, you know, yep. the intensive training that goes right. into uh, that. You usually need, you need a pre-chiropractic degree, which is a two or four year program first mm -hmm. in usually either in a, a human anatomy or biology. And then from there, you would go to a chiropractic, specific accredited chiropractic college, and that's another four years. So about eight years of training. Wow, that is a lot. And that. then you take boards and uh, um, national board exams and state exams mm -hmm. uh, for each state, so. Okay, um, so 
So how does, explain to me, because I mean, mm -hmm. in my mind, I envision chiropractor is you're moving someone's bones, and I don't yeah. believe that's exactly what you're doing, is it, or is it? Well, in, in a sense, it is. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're re again, we're restoring re function because yeah. things, um, but there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, uh, obviously, I'm going to treat a newborn baby or my 97-year-old patient yeah. a heck of a lot different than I am my a 15-year-old uh, who comes in with a sports injury um, as opposed to a 42-year-old woman. Everybody is different, and, that, and everyone is unique. And some bodies require more... Uh, uh, working on the muscles and mm -hmm. muscle work and, and, and gentle mobilization techniques to move something. And some bodies respond better with a deeper, high velocity, low amplitude thrust to, to move the joint. Uh, everybody's different. So it's a matter of finding what's best for, for that body and what's best clinically for that patient too and how the patient responds uh, yeah. better. So there's lots of different ways. So yes, we are moving, moving the bones, uh, but there's different ways different to do degrees, that. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's tools that we use sometimes to, to move the bones with just gentle motion tools. There's our hands-on, there's muscle work, there's stretching. There's lots of different ways to, to move things to get the uh, desired results that we're looking for. Okay. Yeah. So when yes. someone comes to you yeah. with a problem, does, does the process hurt when you do the chiropractic mm. work? Uh, that's a good question. No, no. Okay. It's, it's awkward because somebody's, you know, you know, t touching you, moving you, moving you, but as far as hurt, no, no. Okay. Um, I, they may be sore sometimes after I work yeah. on it because I'm poking and prodding and trying to get to the cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. And that's really the neat thing about chiropractic is we're really trying to get to the cause of the problem. Um, medicine, and, and not say anything bad about medicine, but medicine tends to just cover up mm -hmm. the problem when you're taking like pain, pain relievers and stuff don't right. solve and, it. And, they just and that's it. fine yeah. for a certain time or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we're, as a chiropractor, what we're trying to do is get to this true cause of what's causing that problem to fix the problem, to correct it. Um, so in, in the process, you know, sometimes I'm working on somebody and it might cause a little soreness, almost like if you worked out too much, that soreness uh, mm -hmm. some, uh, sometimes with mm -hmm. some patients. Uh, but pain, no. No, I probably wouldn't be getting a whole lot of patients back. If so if you <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That is definitely true. Well, that's what I was yeah. wondering. You know, it's a, yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Didn't probably didn't hurt, but I didn't. Right, know. right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. It's, you know, it's a so. different sensation at first. So but, if yeah. you've got someone, let's say, for a knee pain, uh -huh. going to a doctor, getting cortisone shots, mm. doing all kinds of things, and mm. it's not helping. It's mm. not helping. Mm. Is there something a chiropractor can there's, do for them? You know, it again, I mean, I know not always, but... You, you know, it depends. Yeah, on, again, yeah, if yeah. there's a tear as opposed to if there's a dysfunction. But a lot of times, again, you got to look at the bigger picture. Sometimes it's the foot that's not functioning. Well, there's a little joint in the foot that's causing that gait to, to walk incorrectly that's causing knee pain. Yeah. Sometimes the hip or the low back is out causing, referring yeah. pain to the knee. So you really got to look at the whole chain there and see what is, what is going on. Is it the knee dysfunction itself? There's something not moving well in there? Is there something there? Or is it... Or is it the ankle? Or you know, or is it the hip, low back? You know, looking at the whole body, see mm -hmm. why is that knee not functioning well? You know, so and, and to see why is it, what's causing it what's to it give can. it to pain? So mm -hmm. you know, we really got to look at you know, where are they? Are they skewed? Are they walking? Are their are their pelvis on level? So they're they're walking too much on one side, so they're creating this imbalance. Is that happening? You know, mm -hmm. this possibility. Okay. So. Now, as we age, are there any areas? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that does happen. That are there to any all areas us, that it? they're, you know, <laughs> like I know I'm always hearing about the hip replacements, oh, yeah. and is your yeah. back? Are there any areas that are more susceptible to problems with joints and bones? Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 um, a lot of it depends on lifestyle and what you do. You know, okay. if, if, if a patient sits all day. Uh, and is very sedentary, that it surprisingly degenerates the, the low back uh, a lot. Yeah. If the patient does a lot of um, do a lot of damage to their body as far as uh, physical activity, but to the point of where they damaged it, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, marathon running, a lot of jamming, you know, that'll cause a lot of you know mm -hmm. knee problems. Um, sometimes inactivity is worse than. Activity, you know, a lot of people, older people, start getting shoulder discomfort because they're not using that whole range of motion. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're younger, you're constantly moving your body, your shoulders, your kids, you're, you know, jumping, running, and everything. And then, 
our plane of uh, our range of motion decreases significantly as we age. So then now you don't have that good, the motion gives it the, lubricates the joint, gives it the nutrients, uh, it gives that mobility in there. So now you're, you get a little bit more sedentary, you're at a computer all day, you're doing this all day. Well, now that joint isn't getting that lubricant, it isn't getting that motion, and it starts to degenerate because it's right. not getting that right. So yes, and a lot of it's due to, a lot of it can be prevented from taking care of the body. And that's early what, enough. As chiropractors, what we try to teach too is, is look at the whole body, you know? You're sitting mm -hmm. down all day. You need to get up and move. You need these exercises to do the stretch. You need to uh, do these different things to, to mm -hmm. try to keep that body as healthy as possible and keep it, again, functioning. Because I adjust you once, well, you go and sit down there and do this all day long, <laughs> then yeah. you're just going to negate everything. So you need, to, you need to take part in this. And a lot of people who come to chiropractors tend to be care about their bodies a lot. They tell, tend to be uh, uh, very motivated to, to because, you know, uh, they tend to take care of their bodies. And so, so they tend to be uh, highly motivated. To, so more to active maybe too? Um, yeah. yeah. You know, you tend yeah. to see people just, you know, want to keep that body as functioning mm -hmm. as healthy as possible. Absolutely. So what is the average duration of a chiropractic like if you're trying to solve an issue in someone's body, how many times do they have to come oh back? Oh God, every body, every I'm sure it's single different, body. But, you know okay. what? That's probably the that's the crystal ball right there. Yeah. Every body is different. You know, I can have. Um, that's why young people are so great to adjust, like young kids. You know, mm -hmm. because they haven't had 30 years of <laughs> damaging their body. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> adjustment. Boom. Oh my God. You know, they're like like yeah. it's a miracle cure yeah. because you know they come in and hobbling because they you know, just got jammed up playing basketball you know adjust them and it's like i'm fine you know i'm great yeah. you know uh, <laughs> okay see you next time yeah. you come in whereas uh you know you've got 20 30 40 years of things that have built up slowly over time yeah. over time over time that's a little bit different and again uh, again every body is different but it depends on what, what you do yeah. if you're sitting there on a computer all day long doing like this you know um or stress high anxiety person that's always stressed like the benefit just coming <laughs> yeah, in more often yeah. regularly to prevent things right. from happening as opposed to somebody who just once in a blue moon tweak something on needs adjustment and then they're on the way so so that's probably one of my hardest questions is because so there is yeah, no wow. average, really. Yeah. It's just really it's so customized to what it, it you're. It really is. Yeah, each body is uni unique, and, and it depends on yeah, you know what what you know what's best yeah. for that one person. And also, you know, um, sometimes you'll see when you age, the shoulders get a little oh, rounded, yeah. or the back yeah. curves. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, is that just aging, or is well, that something that is preventable? Yes and yes. Okay. I mean, yes, it is aging, but yes, it is preventable. And it, and again. Um, now, you know, you've been doing this for 25 years. Now, again, it, it's not moving. It's not getting those nutrients. Now, now a lot of times it gets jammed up that way because yeah. that's, you know, what. But if you, you know, if you get in there, sometimes just even, even when I get patients like that, you get in there, work on those adhesions, get those joints moving, get the, and get them to start doing some exercise and pulling back. The body is a living, growing tissue, even, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, you know, 80 years old. The body's still growing, and, you know, so there's lots of changes that can be made still. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, good to know. Yeah. Because you do see some older people who literally are walking and their heads mm -hmm. are down, and it looks like it's going to hurt every right. day. Oh, yeah. Right. So and a lot of times, you know, yeah. when you get such degeneration and stenosis, yeah. that forward bending opens up the joints a little bit, so it frees it up a little bit, so they tend mm -hmm. to do that to... Yeah. Get out of just discomfort, right? Mm -hmm. But the key is to to prevent I that. I don't want to yeah. be there, you know. Like yeah. saying, preventing that as much as possible to try to keep your body as as you know healthy, and that mm -hmm. and that's by keeping that body again optimally functioning is is really really the key the to key. keep it mm -hmm. as healthy as possible. Absolutely. And who would be an ideal patient, or what type of patient do you think would be? For Reiki. Okay. So anybody that experiences a tough time with anxiety, um, stress, um, a chronic illness, mm -hmm. um, fatigue, those are um, good candidates to have Reiki. And then for dogs, dogs that are experiencing anxiety, fear of thunderstorm, maybe they're in a new environment so they're having a hard time settling in or they've had a recent injured injury or surgery, they would right. come in I'm and do some Reiki. And how long is the session usually? Um, it depends. So with a human, it could go anywhere from 20 minutes to a half an hour. It just sort of 
depends on the person that's coming in. And with a dog, it's completely different. And um, with a dog, it's very intuitive, and the dog actually runs the show, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And we don't <laughs> end the session until the dog tells us that the session is to be ended. And so okay. then, how do you know this? I was just going to say, does Reiki make dog talk? <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Just by watching um, the interactions, the yeah, and um, they may come and um, nudge up against you or lick your hand, mm -hmm. um, different for every dog. But again, following the actions of the dog is basically how you can tell how the session's going and when the session is ready to end. For a human, so basically what happens is somebody would come in to have a Reiki session and I would have them either sit in, on a massage chair or lie down on a massage table. And I would scan their body with my hands over their body like this to feel the indifferences in heat or sensations. Okay. And, and I will get either heat or sensations in my hands. Okay. And depending on where I feel these things, that's where I am called to go work on these areas. So Reiki in general is pretty intuitive and it's a wacky thing because somebody could come in and say, you know, Carlene, my, my back is bothering me. You know, maybe you need to work on my back and I could do a scan, but the back is not it, that it's not telling me I need to go there. I'm being told to go maybe over onto the, so, the shoulder area. Hmm. I remember okay. um, this one woman that I was doing raking on recently. Um, I did a scan of her body. And she's telling me, you got to work on my back. you got to work on my back. It's really bothering me. And when I did a scan, um, I was being told to work on her neck area. And, you know, I didn't say anything. I just I did what I was, you know, told to do intuitively, did my thing, and then when we were done, I said to her, you know, I, I realized you said that you would like for me to work on your back, but I was really being told to work on your neck. She was like, I, I can't figure out why that would be. And um, we left her office, because I did it in her office on a massage chair, and we were walking to the front entry, and she realized only a couple days ago that she had choked on a piece of food. And the choking was so bad that she was actually in the hospital for it. She had to go to the hospital. So it was obvious that the Reiki, that there was still some clogged up energy in there that need to be, needed to be working out or mm -hmm. worked out. Okay. So that was kind of neat. So when you're performing Reiki on a person, do they actually feel something or are you the only one that feels something? So that's a great question. It's different for everyone. and. Most of the people that I've worked on, they feel something. Mm -hmm. They may feel a little tingling or they may feel warmth as, as I'm scanning their body. And then there's other people that don't feel anything and then, you know, they're confused. Oh, no, you know, I didn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. But Reiki is always working. And even if um, I just may not go to the right area, the Reiki will go where it needs to go. Um, I had this one woman that I worked on at one of the senior centers. Um, so her first time in, and I did the Reiki and everything, and we were done. And I hear her telling her friends, I didn't feel anything. And she was very upset, and uh, she went home. Well, I get a phone call a couple days later, and she calls up. She says, I just want to let you know I didn't feel anything when you were working on me. And so, you know, here I am thinking I'm, I'm going to get really, you know, in trouble here. But I slept for three hours after that <laughs> session. So it was obvious it that, that Reiki did do, you know, some good for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great. And Dr. Tammy, can you tell me a little bit about allergies and testing and where that all fits in with this? Oh, what yes, we were you talking had, about. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, in, in this chiropractic field, um, there's so many neat things happening out there now, mm -hmm. and one of them is uh, what that we're offering in the office uh, starting in the next week or two is called Hemocode, and it's a um, and it's a system where it's uh, assessing the blood, so you would get a uh, pinprick blood test for 250 different 
allergens, food allergens, mm -hmm. um, that, um, and additives that may be affecting your body and affecting the healing process. So <clears throat> as opposed to food um, uh, aller specific allergies, where that's highly allergic reactions, life-threatening, mm -hmm. these are food sensitivities more. Okay, I um, understand, yes. <clears throat> so these are food sensitivities that may not be agreeing with you. So you may be, your body may be sensitive um, to some foods that are might be very healthy foods, but they're just not interacting well with your body, and it's ca it could cause <clears throat> a lot of problems that could cause anywhere from allergy, you know, uh, mm -hmm. allergy sensitivities, and a lot of weight gain, and people having problem with weight loss because that they're not eating the right foods for their for body. Them. So there's this great new um, <clears throat> product that we'll be introducing, it's called Hemocode. Well, we're, we're, it's a Canadian company, and it's just being introduced into the United States. So where we're going to be uh, testing and assessing for uh, the, the uh, 250 different food allergens. So it should be really, really fascinating because um, there's, you know, over the years, you know, I think our bodies have become sensitized. And, and um, for example, the, the, the man who, uh, who had designed this uh, had a healthy runner, kept his weight down, but always had allergies every year. And when he did, did this hemocode, he found he was sensitive to tea, honey, blueberries, mm -hmm. all healthy foods. He was eating them, but it just didn't agree with his body. With and his once system. he eliminated it out of his diet, he was, it, all those allergies were diminished significantly. So it's, that's, it's that really, is interesting. yeah, and that just helps the whole healing process mm -hmm. itself. And that's what we're looking at is kind of the, the holistic approach. Yeah, with the, with the chiro chiropractic, we're looking at all different things, uh, you know, uh, that might be affecting that healing process and we want to keep the body as healthy as po uh, possible in many many different ways yeah. okay well i wanted to thank both of you for joining us today and if you'd like to find out more about dr tammy nelson or carlene fisher hoffman you can check them out on wboa.org and also find out a little bit more about the women's business owners alliance thank you ladies Thanks. thank you